So you can see that much of the challenge of our society lies in rural India. We have 640,000 villages and there is poverty there. And there is illiteracy, um, there is problems of health and problems of education. India is a young country and we have a challenge that 10 million people will be coming into the job market every year. So we need to provide for them sustainable livelihoods. Ten years ago, uh, we in ITC, that is my company, of which company I am the chairman of, redefined its purpose. We said to ourselves that it is our purpose to serve our shareholders through serving our society, through a commitment well beyond the market that we are not only a market participant and limit our contribution to what the market demands of us, but a well beyond the market. We said to ourselves, and we actually initiated two kinds of strategies. One, a triple bottom line initiative, which was integrated with our business strategy, a part and parcel of the business model. And the second, we demanded of every unit of ours, we are spread all over India, every unit of ours, that that unit would serve in the command areas of its operation or its, uh, its location, serve the local community by helping them generate sustainable livelihoods. So we have two parts of this triple bottom line approach. One, linked to our business, so that as we subserve shareholder aspirations, we also are subserving the societal goals of sustainability. And the other one is where we live, we want to spread prosperity by building capacity of the local society. The first project that we undertook was called e Chopal. Now, Chopal is in our language a meeting place of villagers. Uh, e is electronic chopal. Now, we were in agri-commodities business. Uh, one way was to go and go to the established government-run markets and buy your agri-commodities there and, com and, and compete. The other method was to uh, re-visualize the farmer as the first step of your extended value chain. And that it is your responsibility to make that first step as competitive or the source of your competitiveness to be able to fight in the global marketplace. So we devised a method to empower the small and marginal farmers. You know, India's marginal farmer suffers from lots of disabilities. First and foremost, even though India is the second largest in arable land and is the largest in irrigated land, our productivity is a fraction of the best in class. The reason is that 55% of agriculture is still dependent on rain and our marginal and small farmers do not have the capacity to be able to manage their meager resources. They do not have the information, they don't have the leverage uh, they don't have uh, knowledge, uh, they don't have access to inputs, and so on and so forth. And then it's in the clutches of the middleman who takes all the surplus away by squeezing out the margins. So the farmer gets a very small share of the consumer spend at the other end. So what do we do to empower and, and build the capacity and the small and marginal farmer? Now I'm showing to you um, a, a picture now, there is no electricity in many of the villages in India. Uh, and if you, even if it is there, it does not have bandwidth, it, you know, it, and it is there for a very short while. Now, you can see in the picture, here, I, I believe it is there, yes. Uh, this is a solar battery uh, to, to charge the batteries, and this is the, the satellite dish, and there is a computer. Now, everybody in villages does not know how to function a computer. So uh, what do we do? We create a, a man in, in the middle. We initiate the idea, 
and we create a lead farmer, get him to take an oath, uh, and then uh, he takes the oath that he would use this new resource to be able to subserve the requirements of the local community. And that then he begins to function. Now this, in the local language, provides all the information and knowledge customized to that agri-climatic zone. Now what kind of soil, uh, what kind uh, of inputs that it requires, we provide through him a soil testing services, also provide information on weather, on, on prices, not only what's happening around in the markets, but also in the Chicago Board of Trade, what is the trend, and if the farmer wants, he can withhold selling his commodities. So this solution that we provided is, provides, as I mentioned to you, price discovery, market access at Mark Farmgate, and also much more than this, it creates a virtual cooperative and enhances the bargaining power of the small and marginal farmer. So when he goes, he aggregates his buying uh, as a community, so he, he has a little more bargaining power, and also can aggregate his produce before he begins to sell it. Now this is what we did, and today we have this operation in 6,500 locations. And each of these locations services about six villages. Having done, gone this far, now we've created, we've created the human infrastructure, the people who have been trained to work at this and to empower the farmer through knowledge and information. Now we are building physical infrastructure, and you will see this. And this is for six villages, there is one each of all. That is the digital kiosk, the internet empowerment. And for 40 of these each of all, there is one hub uh, where there is a physical infrastructure where uh, many things can happen. He can, where there, there are storages for his agri commodities, uh, and, and then where he can buy whatever he needs. From a tractor to a needle, uh, the farmer's requirements uh, can get fulfilled. More than that, even telemedicine is possible. The problem of the Indian farmer's backwardness is because he's not very well connected. The moment you provide, and, and no infrastructure has been there because the, it, he doesn't have the economic capacity to pay for that infrastructure. So we've now reached digitally, and digitally this empowerment, and we've now created on this basis because we can redeem the cost of our capital over multiple transactions. And by bringing many players to ride this highway, digital highway, now, this is what we have attempted to do. And similarly, we can provide the services that are uh, for soil testing and so on. So this eChopal network is a two-way fulfillment channel. It's an efficient channel for flow of goods and services in and out of villages. And this infrastructure can be used in partnership with us by anybody who has either something to sell or anything that person needs to buy in terms of goods or services.